Welcome back. This is Dan Havey. And in this video, we're going to answer Catherine's question. She was hacking this site right here. And she wanted to know how could she do the exact same thing they had here where you come in and you hover. And when you hover, the uh, background gets opaque. And then the word wedding shows up right in there as well. And the other words as as well. And then when you click on it, then it'll take you to a gallery of the wedding pictures. And so I uh, jumped on that and I put together a little mock-up here and mine does pretty much the exact same thing. Theirs did not go to black and white. They left it slightly colorized. I thought it would look better. I thought if you went to black and white along with going opaque and then having the text show through as well. And I also made it so you can have any size image in here. And I, and, and at first I was thinking you should probably have all the same size images. And then I, I just kind of put this together and said, well, yeah, if you want kind of a, a collage kind of effect, you can have it. And then of course, if you click on one of these, it will open up in this case here, it opened up Google in another window, or you could have it just open up right in uh, this, um, I shouldn't say window tab, you could have it just open up right in this tab as well. So let's take a look at what you have to do to build this out. It is pretty darn simple as far as the build out goes. Just got a section, got a three column row inside of it. And then I just put in a bunch of image elements, six of them of course and then a number of headline elements. So a couple minor things I had to set in here. So for each one of the images, I came in and I set a data title for them and I called them gallery. And in this case here, it's gallery one, two, three, four, five, six. So gallery one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's only had to do that because I wanted to be able to keep the headline and the gallery together. Otherwise, I wouldn't even needed to number them, but I had to make sure that we could match them up so that, you know, this one is wedding and this one is anniversaries and this one is kids parties or whatever the gallery would be of. And so whenever you type in your data title, just make sure you type it in and then you click on update or it will not save it. Then for the headlines, basically did the exact same thing. We'll open up that headline. And we came down into our hashtag and for our data title here, I just said image text number three, again, number them one through six or however many elements you have. And then we will click on update to save it. And one last thing here in the images, I had uh, put in a link for each one of them that would take you then to the gallery page. And again, here you can either open it up in a new tab or you can make it open in the existing tab. And I'm pretty sure in this case over here, they had it open up in the existing tab. So let me go back in here. And that's really it for the setup. So what we have to do now is we have to tell the computer that what we want to do is we want to grab a hold of this headline and we actually want to put it inside of this image element. So think about anywhere in the computer is the way I always look at it. In fact, let me just open up this page over here. You have boxes is essentially what you have. So here you have the image itself. That's essentially a box and inside of that box, I mean, outside of that box is another box known as a div and then another box and another box. And you can see as I go up here, it highlights more and more information as the boxes get bigger and bigger. And so that's really how this works is we're saying inside of here, we want to take this box essentially and put it inside of this box. So in, in the computer code, once you have a box, you can put stuff anywhere around it you want. You can put it inside of it, you can put it inside at the bottom, you can put it inside at the top, you can put it on the right or the left, you can put it above it, you can put it below it, you can put it on either side of it. Just with using code, you can say, okay, this is where I want these things to appear relative to this particular box that we have. And in this case here, our box is this image. So what we're gonna say is we want to append this headline inside of this box and append simply means put it at the bottom. If we were to prepend, we would put it at the top of the image and then you can do an insert before or an insert after. Insert before would put it above the image outside of it. 
insert after would put it below the image outside of it. So in this case here, we're going to just use append. And so let's go into our tracking code. And this is why I said I had to number everything so I would keep them together. So all we're saying here is take gallery number one, which is image number one. Or let's actually just look at number three here. It's easier to see. So we got gallery number three right here. We're saying append to it text text number three. So the text number three is going to go inside of the box and it's going to start off being basically right down here at the bottom. So that's what this JavaScript code does. And I could have figured out a really fancy way of doing this without having to put in the numbers, but it would have taken me a couple of hours. And I said, well, why don't I just duplicate the line and just be done with it? And so that's obviously the simplest way to do that. So we will X out of there. Then the next thing we have to do is we have to look at the CSS to make it do all the fancy stuff. And so when we come in here like this again, we have, um, we have, we have the, the uh, text actually behind the image before we ever hover over it. So as soon as we come in on the CSS, we're going to say, Hey, take that text that was down here and stick it up behind here and center it. That's the first thing we do so that when we come in to hover, all we have to do then is turn it black and white and reduce the opacity to only 30%. Reducing that opacity then allows the text that is behind here to come through the page. And also I put in there a Z index of minus nine just to push it back behind the image because otherwise when we came in here, if we were to hover over the text itself, it would no longer be clickable. So now here the entire element is clickable and you can still see the text through there nicely. And it's pretty much the same effect they had over here where the text is kind of washed out because it's actually behind the image as well. So that's how we have it set up here. So now let's go in and take a look at that CSS. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to turn that off and you see what happened there. As soon as I did that, let me just uh, undo it. See the headlines are here right now. When I take that off, boom, they disappear. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of spacing that you want between these images. And in this case here, I have 35 pixels uh, margin at the top of these lower images. And these two here at the top, I put those down 10 pixels just to make it more balanced with these uh, two center images. So let's go back into the CSS. And it's the opacity here that made that disappear. So if I take that opacity back out and let me do this asterisk slash. So now if I take that opacity back out, wait a second, what happened there? Okay, there it, uh, it shows them again. So we'll just take that out again. Okay, so now what we say is let me close this down. In fact, let me do it this way. Let's go into this itself and we are going to right click and we're going to inspect and I'm going to show you then what this code looks like in on the fly. So first off, what you see here is you have your image element and this headline element. Now this headline element would have started off Outside, it would have started off in line with this here. So basically, it would have been at the same level as this element here. But because we appended it, we put it inside of this image wrapper element right there. So what we want to do is we know now that when we hover on this image, it's going to make this stuff in here appear. So everything that we're doing in the CSS that's affecting the image text I'll show you that right here, image text, where is it, data title, image text three right here. So we know that everything, when we hover on this, is going to affect all this stuff right here. Well, inside of the inspector tool, you can sim simulate that. So we're going to open up the inspector tool. We're going to come down here and where it says HOV, we're going to toggle the element state. So we're going to give it a state of hover. So now we're having the equivalent of hovering over this. And then also we have to do the same thing for image because when we hover over 
the uh, when we hover over the image itself, it will change it to black and white as you see. But we have another element here, which is the image itself, and we have to hover over that to turn on the opacity. And then that way, the text will shine through. Like I said, as soon as we come in here with this bit of with this bit of CSS here at the top, it takes this and sticks it behind there. So then we have to. Uh, turn on the opacity to be able to see it through to the front. So now let's come down and let's take a look at what we do to make that text align where we want it to. So uh, first off, let's just turn off the Z index. And you're going to see then when I come in here, see it goes from a pointer to that straight line, which indicates that that's text. So if somebody were to click right there, that would not activate the hyperlink, the anchor text, and so it would not go anywhere. So that's why I did the Z index to push it to the back. And then let's just take off a couple of these other things and we'll build it back from there. So the first thing we have to do is we want to say we want to absolute position this which whenever you do absolute positioning, it will position itself inside of the element that it's already inside of. So again, because we took that text and we stuck it inside of the image, it will position itself inside of the image, not inside of the, the, entire, um, the entire page or anything like that. So we're gonna turn that back on so it positions itself inside of the actual text element and then we're going to say we want to be 50 percent from the top so right now the top of this line right here will be exactly 50 percent from the top and then we're going to do 50 percent left and so now this is if you split it down the middle here it's 50 percent to the left so this part right here right in the upper corner wherever it is because this box is obviously a little bit bigger um, right here is the exact center of that image. Well, of course, that's not doing us any good because it's way off to the side. So in our next bit here, we're going to say, take this element and we want to translate it in three dimensions. So we want to move it in three dimensions, but we're not going to be having any Z index. So which is through, we're just going to do X and we're going to do Y. And so what we want to do is we want to move it over to the left minus 50% right here. So minus 50% of the size of the element itself. And then we want to move it down 50% the height of the element. So left 50% of the width down 50% of the height. And again, if we were, let's just come in here and let's just say, let's take out that minus sign. It's going to push it way over there and the same thing there. And of course, that's not what we want. So let's just put this back in and now it centers it perfectly for us. So now you see how all of this CSS right here works. The rest of it then is pretty simple because what I said the next thing was is we're gonna have that grayscale applied so that when somebody hovers over it then, and I can get it to come live here now, is so when I hover over it, it just turns it gray, turns it to black and white, and then the next one is, well, before we, before we go on to the next one, let me just back up here a little bit. You see here we're using data titles, and that's why we put those data titles in for each element. And here's the syntax on it. But what you're going to see is there is a little asterisk right there. And you're also going to notice there are no numbers. We numbered them all one through six. So here what we did is we just said by putting in this asterisk and equals, that says that this data title, look for all data titles that contain the text, image text. So as long as it contains this string of numbers, letters, whatever, um, alphanumerics, as long as it contains that string, then that's what we're targeting. And that, of course, would be all six of them. So that's how that looks. And so here, this is just targeting the text. This one down here is targeting all of the images. And then, and we're going to show this in a little bit how we can do a little bit of fancy animation on it. But then here what we're saying is, again, we're targeting all of the images, but we're saying do this thing when we hover over it. So colon hover just says when you hover over it, give it that, back, or give it that uh, grayscale color. So take the image and make it black and white. So now let's go back into our CSS. 
And let's see, let's go on down to the next one then. So same thing here, we have gallery. So any element that contains the word gallery in it. Now in this case here, we're not going to affect the entirety of the gallery because remember inside of this element, which we're calling gallery, that also contains that text because we put the text inside of there. And what we want to do is we want to change the opacity down to only 30%. If we were to do that to the entire thing, the text would also lose all of its opacity and we won't be able to see it through the picture when we got done. So what we're saying here is don't affect the whole thing, just affect the image. So let me go in here and show you where that is. It's right here is the image. So we're saying come into this element right here. So we got data title gallery three. And we're saying go find the image element inside of it and then we want to affect just that image element so that's what we got here and then again we only want to do it when we hover over the image and then the last one here is we want to turn the opacity back on so up here at the top we turn the opacity off for the text, meaning basically make it invisible. Now down here, we want to turn that opacity back on. Let me make this taller. We want to turn that opacity back on. So how do we do that when we can't hover over the text? Because the text is hiding behind this image. If we hover over anything, it's hovering over the image or over the gallery in particular here. So I mean, I say image and gallery intertwined but as we saw here there's an actual image inside of the gallery itself so when we hover over the gallery element we need it to do something and we need it to affect the image text which is hiding behind it so, so this is how you do it when you want to affect one element by doing something to another you could and, and usually you use this on hover so what we're saying is when we hover over element a we want it to affect element B. And that's what we're doing here. So we're saying we want that opacity to be one. And so when we hover over the gallery, we're going to affect the image and we're going to make that then visible. Which I just paused the video for a second. And the reason why is because, you know, when you're writing code, you, you test something and then you test something else and you move things around and you do all that. And what I realize now is I don't need to make this opacity zero here because I'm hiding it behind the image. Before that, I wasn't hiding it behind the image. I had it outside of the image and then was putting it in at the last second. So I had to hide it and then show it once it got behind the image. But in this case here, I don't need to do that. So I can actually take out this, uh, this bottom part here and the opacity equals zero here as well. And it will work. And I want to just save it one more time and click on preview just to make 100% sure that that's what I have going on. And so as we come in and we hover, just want to make sure they're all working right. Yeah, it's still working just fine because, again, like I said, what our code says here is that we're going to take this and we're going to position it in the center behind the image. And then the way we see the image then is when, I'm sorry, the way we see the text then is because we turned the image down to only 30% opacity. And we're actually looking through the image to see the text that is behind it. So I'm actually, I'm just going to, I'll just move this down here out of the way. So now the last thing I wanted to show you real quick is just a little bit of animation and a little bit of, um, of a box shadow. So let me just turn this off. And so all we're going to say here is we want to have this image, when we hover over it, we want it to have an increase uh, 5%. So it's going to go from 1.00 to 1.05. So that's a 5% increase in size. We're going to have it put this box shadow around the outside. And up here, we're going to say that we want this transition to occur on all the elements and it's gonna take 0.2 seconds and it's going to ease in and out, meaning it'll come in slowly, then it'll go fast and then it'll, it'll go down slow again. But because we're doing this in two tenths of a second, it, it'll be barely noticeable. So let's uh, click on that and then we will preview. 
and then as we come in and we hover, the image gets a little bit bigger and it gets a little bit of the uh, shadow around the outside of it. So that's just one effect that you could put on there. You could just have it grow in size. You could just have it do a shadow. Um, there's all kinds of animations you could do. You could have, you could hover over the thing and have it twirl around in a circle and flip upside down and do all kinds of stuff. But generally speaking on a site like this, you're not going to be doing anything crazy like that. So I think that is it for today. I learned a little something learned I didn't need to put that in there as I went through this so again as always if you have any questions feel free to reach out have a great day